Are there other body parts that you can boop other than the nose? Ooh, I don't like thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I think the answer is no. I don't think it's that as disturbing of a question. You can as boop an sense. elbow. Are you gonna? You can't boop. You this can is, easily boop, boop an my elbow, elbow Matt. <laughs> How do you define boop? Is it just a light touch? I thought it was just like a boop. <laughs> that, thank you. Thank you. Just a boop. It's 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 a boop. Hey guys, and welcome to GT Not Live, where it's another day, another FNAF iceberg, the series that has gone on so long that we actually hired on someone else to just keep the content fresh and interesting. <laughs> Isn't that right, Ash? Absolutely. Uh, so this is not the fabled showdown between Ash and Matt yet. That is going to happen later, correct? Yes. We're, and you're you're both committed to going through with this, right? Yeah, I can do 100%. it. hundred percent. FNAF showdown? Yeah. Who do you think would win? I'm curious. So Matt, you have gone through this whole iceberg with me. Ash, what is what is your knowledge of the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise? Um, so it's definitely probably more surface level than than Matt's. So I'm going to have to do some studying, but okay. I'll just make one of my fam um, famous PowerPoints and go from there. Oh, you have a famous PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Yeah. So one of the really wonderful things about um, working in corporate is that you get really, really talented it's at true. PowerPoints. PowerPoints are a, a uh, massive skill. You have no idea how much you can do in them. And they do not appreciate a star wipe, unfortunately. No, a star transition don't. between the two. They Beer! They're, they're like, oh. So I've made PowerPoints on, like, my friend's ancestry, mm -hmm. um, the many backstories of Apollo Justice from the Ace Attorney franchise. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. There's a lot. They keep adding them for him. Um, and now I have to make one for FNAF, which is going to be, like, at least 100 slides. But you know what? <laughs> I've had a little bit of insomnia anyway, so I think it's okay. Wow. All right. 100 slide FNAF lore PowerPoint. Whereas, <laughs> Matt, what, what are you planning on doing in preparation for this big event? This here's, big smackdown, as it were. Here's the thing. I I have fatigue from this series. <laughs> so Ash is coming in here fresh-faced, right? Yeah. I've been knee-deep yeah, in you, the sludge of this franchise. You're war-hardened at this point. <laughs> yeah. You're a veteran. I'm battle-hardened. Uh, yeah, battle-hardened. <laughs> but I I think maybe that is to my detriment. Real? Oh, oh. no. Mm-hmm. Really? You're, yeah. So you're just throwing in the towel already? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> you Matt's just given, like, laying over and giving up. Maybe. Maybe I should have more faith in myself. I was going to say. you should, friend. Just try, Thanks, man. Guys. Just because you're not making a hundred slide PowerPoint. <laughs> I, yeah. I will say, PowerPoint, absolutely. If you ever want a job or need a job, practice your PowerPointing skills. Like, we all laugh about it in school. But, man, uh, Stephanie's first ever job, um, and it was, a, it was an important job, right? She, she actually lucked out in a very good role when she first uh, applied to jobs. Um, had a PowerPoint test as a part of it where she was given, I think, like 45 minutes to an hour to recreate a, sl a pretty elaborate slide as best as she could. And it was down to, like, you know, the shadows on the bars of the graph and stuff like that. I mean, like, it was it was intense. So, Ash, you are a PowerPoint pro, huh? Oh, yes. I, I love PowerPoint. When you learn that it's more than bullet points, your mind opens. Oh, I mean, you could do any... PowerPoint is shockingly flexible. Uh, uh -huh. Stephanie has storyboarded out, like, multiple episodes of the show in PowerPoint sometimes. Like, it's crazy. You know, and you can do like some green, like green screening effects and stuff. PowerPoint, it's a powerful, I mean, the, do not underestimate the power part of the pointing. It's, it's there. It's not just, it's not just clickbait. Hey, let's finish this iceberg. We're not going to finish this We're iceberg. We're not going to finish the iceberg. We're close to finishing we the iceberg. We are so close to finishing the iceberg. Matt is like, thank, <laughs> thank, thank you. It's like praising the heavens. We just uh, got here and we're so close to the bottom and I'm a little afraid. Oh, uh, we're, we've always been close to the bottom. We just <laughs> scrape the bottom all the time. Well, <laughs> not talking about icebergs, just in general, constant <laughs> scraping of the bottom. Um, so when last we left off, we were on open box level, Matt, is that correct? So kind of. Okay, refresh me. So, 
refresh me. I feel like I never leave the FNAF iceberg. <laughs> so I look at this and I'm like, yeah, where were we? In a mad dash attempt to, to get through this. <laughs> we we finished um um faceless bonnie is that bonnie the one above it yeah that is faceless bonnie yes, yes. we uh-huh. finished that uh-huh. and then we tried doing a speed round of the box we got through a couple of them okay um i, I yeah we did purple guy and delta room that's right purple mm-hmm. guy we talked about the open box we did we talked about the fan art stuff so nightmares brain we talked about yep if you want to cover a few of the remaining and then i think i think we move it on to um whoever that is hanging uh, yeah, that's Mangle. That's yeah. that's Mangle hanging. Yeah, we can talk about that. Actually, that's one that is very, like, one of the darkest moments of the franchise. Ooh. It's you one of my favorites, actually. Hangle. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Mangle Dangle, but that works. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> oh, Ash just Uno reverse carded you. <laughs> Matt's like, I got a good one. Hangle. And Ash is like, Dangle. Boo. Wow. <laughs> Uh, see the, the rivalry between the two figments yeah, of my man. It's, it's 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 getting intense, man. <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, okay, let's go through this uh, real quick. So, I look at the open box section, and I don't know a lot of the other ones. Um, slumbering fish turtle. Uh, I'm assuming the only time that we've ever seen a turtle in the game is. Uh, what you would call it? Uh, I'm, I'm I'm warming up here. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Now I've you've made me lose all of my FNAF knowledge. We were just so clever. We were right. <laughs> I I'm like oh hangle dangle. That's awesome. Um, FNAF World. Thank you. Uh, in FNAF World there are turtles. So I'm assuming Slumber Fish Turtle is a enemy or something. Slumber Fish Turtle. Great. Perfect. Uh, unused or removed content. Here you go. So Matt has looked this up in advance. Unused and removed content. So Matt, if you've looked this up in advance, what was it? Um, unused and removed content. <laughs> I'm glad that... <laughs> From FNAF World. Uh, files for a swimming turtle that was originally used in Slumberfish. What is Slumberfish? Given that the files are grouped among the fish from Dee Dee's Fishing Hole, it's likely that the turtle was intended to be another catchable creature in the minigame. It's zone payout tier or probably function as an obstacle to prevent the player from catching this. Strangely, it is not robotic like the other fish. That might be why it was dropped. Great. So that was... Deep lore! It's super important. What is Slumberfish? Is it... Oh, it's... It... I was assuming it's another Scott game. I know of Scott's other games. I am not super familiar with this one. Actually, I don't think I've ever stumbled across this one. We all know, like, Chipper and Sons. We know Desolate Hope. Oh, man. Oh, it's like a one of those like programming games where you have to design where things like you set up the dominoes and they kind of all do it into each other. It looks like Portal. No. Does it look like Portal? It's Matt? a lot like Portal. It, I mean, there are portals <laughs> yeah. in it. There it's are. It's a lot like there's portals. I wouldn't say it looks like Portal. <laughs> let's uh, let's just clarify one thing. Does this look like Portal? Nah. <laughs> Does it have portals in it as a gameplay mechanic? Yes. So, you know. Valve. It's Portal 3! FNAF has created Portal 3. Scott Cawthon made Portal That's Everyone's been wondering where Portal 3 has been all these years. It's because Scott already made it. In 2012. There, yeah. This. This is this is it. This look, man. This undersea adventure where you push a beach ball through a series of obstacles really reminds me of Portal. <laughs> I don't know how y'all aren't seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I should check my glasses. My eyesight's bad. Oh, man. See, why are we playing this? See, we're talking all this FNAF. Why are we playing Slumberfish? Where is the long play of Slumberfish? Internet. That's what we need. Weird. So he came from that and could have been used in FNAF World, uh, but didn't. Probably rightfully so. Um, What else? Five Nights at Freddy's The Untold Story. I don't know that one either. Um... I'm assuming it's a fan game? Freddy's The Untold Story. The untold, it's a Smike video. Untold Story coming soon. Five Nights at Freddy's creator teases Untold Story novel. Five Nights at Freddy's... Wait, it's not. Like, has used the franchise official website to tease the upcoming novel. Oh! Oh! This is, um... Oh, this is this is tickling the back of my brain. My medulla oblongata is getting tickled back there, way in the back, the brainstem area. Um, 
Yeah! When he first, I think if I'm right, and we can, we'll scan through this, but I believe if I'm right, it was, he, he showed the book cover of Silver Eyes. It was the first ever time you saw a book cover, because this was b before everything happened. And on the book cover, it was uh, Five Nights at Freddy's Untold Stories, which eventually became The Silver Eyes. Um, let's see if we can find, actually, the image for it in the slowest internet possible. There we go. Yes! Yeah, the untold story. Yeah, so this was, because I, I remember this teaser dropping. I forgot that it said untold story. That's really interesting. But back in the day, before there was books, before this was like a multi-universal, let's map out across every media franchise out there, um, it was just the games. And so it was like, oh, we're doing a book series. And then it became the untold story, which became Silver Eyes. And then the fate of the world was changed. And Five Nights at Freddy's was no longer just a game series. It became a book series because now the books far, far, far outnumber the games. So there you have it. That's cool. I forgot about that one. Yeah. Summoning Nightmare Foxy. Nightmare Foxy. I don't know. I don't know this one either. I'm assuming this is a Summon Nightmare Foxy. Okay, this is from, who's this? Connor T. I'm assuming this is just like getting him to spawn early. Okay. Oh, there's the movie maker. So he's so this is night one because they're still. So you honk the horn. You honk, honk the nose a bunch. You boop the nose. Great. That was awesome. <laughs> Why D does that? <laughs> oh, we got him early. Okay. Okay, Nightmare Foxy is the only animatronic in the series that can be specifically summoned. Oh, okay, so that is interesting from a detail standpoint. You can specifically call him to you. This is done by clicking the nose of the Freddy plushie on the bed some number of times greater than 20. At some point. In the mobile version, this is impossible because the flashlight must be on in order for the nose to be clicked. Weird. All right, that, that's got deep lore implications, uh, you know. The, the booping of the nose is clearly uh, connected to the control mechanisms of the animatronics, and that's why they're able to move around, and so the entire time, William Afton's walking around booping the nose of every animatronic character in this franchise to make sure that the animatronics continue to, to behold to him. Right? That, that sounds like appropriate lore. No? Everyone's silent in the peanut gallery. They're like, no, that doesn't make any sense, Matt. It's like um, when you go into the mirror and you have to say Bloody Mary three times. Yeah. It's like legend has it, if you boop the nose at least 20 times, right. then the foxy will happen. Then the foxy summons. Yeah, it's, it's like a less exciting candy man. When did boop become a word? Boop? Mm-hmm. It's always, since the beginning of time. People been booping? Been booping. They've been booping all over. <laughs> <laughs> booping left, booping right, booping no. Most most often booping noses. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Are there other body parts that you can boop other than the nose? Ooh, I don't like thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I think the answer is no. I don't think it's that as disturbing of a question. You can as boop an sense. elbow. Are you gonna? You can't boop. You this can is, easily boop, boop my elbow, elbow Matt. Come on, there's oh. a lot of wires around me. I know. Oh God. Okay, oh, here. Wait, here. Like, <laughs> here. Was that was that How a boop? Was it? Did, did that count as a boop though? I is a feel... boop any like touching of a button esque portion yeah, of the there, body? I feel like there has to be a little bounce back. That's see, that's my thing. Oh. To define a boop, I think it is the bounce back. I agree with Ash on this one. How do you define boop? Is it just a light touch? I thought it was just like a boop. <laughs> <laughs> that, thank you, thank you. <laughs> just a boop. Boop is a boop. It's 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 a boop. I guess there aren't a lot of places with cartilage like your nose. Oh, that's correct. You could right. Put an ear? No. Well, again, I think it's a combination. I think it's a combination of the bounce back plus the button shape. So it's like you're pressing a button with a little bit about like a so tongue. A boop. Ah. Boop your tongue. No. Like here. No, Did you just go straight? <laughs> <laughs> Are we pooping tongues right now? It, it that's, not a, that's not a boob. 
It's not a boo. It's not a clean. It's not a clean press. Like again, this is like a this is like a blurg. This is a boop. Boop is cl- it, it is clear and defined and has a start and end point. Boop. Boop. I feel like we need to circle back. Are we booping tongues right now? Is the worst thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Boop sometimes. <laughs> like my knee too is too hard. Like you can't boop a knee. No. Boop. No, it doesn't. Boop. Boop. That's boop. A, that's a bap. Yeah, yeah. Bap. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's poke. 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 Like it's oh, harder. Oh, that it's is a poke. Poke. Yeah. Poke. Poke. Yeah. yeah, it's harder. It's harder. Oof. Boop yeah. is like a boop. Yeah. There's a there's a spectrum between boop <laughs> and poke. Boop and a poke <laughs> and a press. Yes. A oh, boop, a poke, yeah. and a press. You, you don't boop a nose. I no one. You don't do anything with the tongue. The tongue is just cursed. <laughs> whatever we just, whatever just happened between all three of us and you guys watching needs to stay between just the three of us and you guys watching, because no one ever needs to uh, see or talk about whatever that was ever again. <laughs> oh, we have to boop a nose to control Nightmare Foxy. Great. Um, what else? What else? Insanity ending on day one. So I know insanity ending is a reference to FNAF 6. In FNAF 6, uh, if you did a certain number of... Uh, if, if you bought uh, egg, egg Vault, Egg Baby, it's like an egg archive. It's this weird, like, uh, Russian nesting doll of, of a thing. Uh, that is a very expensive item. It's difficult to get. Once you get it, uh, the color of the monitor button on your screen that you look at every night changes to blue instead of green or red, I think it was. You press it, and that activates the insanity ending in which Henry, the creator, or like, you know, Henry, father of the the girl who was possessed by the puppet, you know, all this stuff, um, comes on and says, like, basically, like, reveals the truth about the game um, and that you're slowly going crazy. So, real quick, I, I am curious. So, I, I'm assuming it means that you just get it on night one. Insanity ending, FNAF 6, day one. Let's try that. How to get insanity on day one with no glitches. This is a very long video. Here's a shorter hey guys, video. guys, Ambience here. Today I'm going to be showing you Ambience. how to get the insanity ending in FNAF 6. Oh, this, this is, is just insanity ending. Easy. Nope, never mind. It's a 34 minute video. Hey, what's up, everyone? Oh, DJ Sturf! Of course it's DJ Sturf! Oh, well, now now that I know it's DJ Sturf, I kind of gotta. I, I, want, I want to watch a little bit of this. And two, three, four, five. He is a. So, for those of you who don't know, again, like, I, I love Sturf. He is a speedrunner uh, of FNAF. He's amazing. He also uh, DDRs and juggles at the same time, which is very impressive. So, I'm assuming he's just got an amazing strategy for getting money. And is yeah. very good at winning games. <laughs> very so many games that in FNAF. Very generous. I don't know if there's a... Apparently this is the game. So now he's buying all the different all right, characters. The Hopefully I won't accidentally buy something else. And there's the egg thing so that, that he has to tragic. buy. Alright, Orville. Where's Wilbur? Oh, game. So he's First making a lot of money. He's getting it all. And then he buys the egg, which is $6,000. Night... Okay. So he got it. And then he gets the insanity ending. Yeah, Which is this. I don't yeah. understand the depth of the depravity of this creature, this monster that I unwillingly helped to create. And it's him talking about how he created William done, Afton, basically. Wasn't enough. He found a new way to desecrate, to humiliate, to destroy. And this is where you get blueprints. The suffering wasn't of remnant enough. and the loss of innocence, the loss of everything the wrath. to so many people. Small souls trapped in prisons of my making, now set to new purpose. And use That's cool. All right. So anyway, I guess you can get a night one. You just have to be really good at the games, which, you know, I think everyone cheated their way to get to Egg Baby. So, cool. Cool, everyone. There was there was an infinite money glitch in that game, so everyone's like, yeah, all aboard that train. Let's do that. Um, I think that's most of... Phantom Foxy glitch is the only other one that I don't know. I'm assuming that this is another, like, summoning him Foxy glitch. Phantom Foxy glitch. Here we go. Last one. Great, he stands there and jumps at you. Okay, cool. <laughs> nice. He's hanging out. That was very exciting. Phantom Foxy Glitch Remastered. Here you go. Yeah, so he's not supposed to stand there. He's supposed to just jump scare you as a phantom. Yeah. 
So the fact that he's standing there is the glitch. Fantastic. Well, good. I'm glad we've all learned things today. Let's go on to Dangle slash Hangle. Not to pit them against each other, but definitely to pit them against each other. Let me know down in the comments below. Which do you like better? Is that mean? Maybe a little bit mean. It's only mean if they don't pick me. <laughs> okay. Well, well, if you pick Ash, you're mean. And if you're not mean, you pick Matt. Perfect. Okay, there you go. So this is so this is uh, hanging mangle, uh, otherwise known as dangle or hangle. Hanging mangle. There it is, right there. Um, so this was actually one of the earliest teasers for FNAF World. Uh, again, like back in the day, Scott would use his website, Scott Games, to release all sorts of imagery. And, you know, you would brighten it and adjust the contrast or whatever to see what was going on. And the first teaser, I believe, for that game was Mangle playing with one of those, like, uh, bouncy rubber ball, paddle ball. Paddle ball? Paddle ball. That's the word I'm going for, right? Do you guys know what paddle ball is? is no. I think it's Are paddle board. Young? What? Paddle board? Paddle ball? Is it paddle ball or paddle board? A, a paddle ball. Because there's a ball like in a paddle. Like on a boat? A paddle board. Oh, a paddle board is, is the thing that you stand. Board. It's like a okay. large surfboard. Yes. Do you I know mean, what unless, a paddle ball is? Unless you attach like a little string onto like a like a boat paddle, then, then you'd have a paddle board. <laughs> 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 yeah. So he's playing paddle ball, yeah. right? And then all of a sudden, so it's like, oh, everyone was confused because it was like, this is a weird, cutesy, like, what is this uh, teaser? Let's see if we can find it. Everyone was like weirded out by this thing. I hope it's in here. Because it started off... Because, again, up to this point, FNAF took itself super seriously. Like, look, it starts off with this, like, creepiness. It's like, oh, this is a scary franchise. And then... Mic drop into the ridiculousness that is FNAF World. And so, it, 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 if I remember this right, it explodes. They've haunted you. Right? Look at how serious. It's great. Everyone's like, whoa, it's a new FNAF game! It's a new FNAF game! Here we go! Yep. The what the is in there. So strange. This came out of nowhere. And this is it. Everyone's like, this is the new FNAF game. What? What? What a game. Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, Toy Freddy, Toy Bonnie, Toy Cheat. I, I don't know why it stopped. It just, it, it couldn't handle the awesomeness that was going on. Literally everyone. Jeez. Yep, th th there it is. <laughs> I mean, honestly, Honestly, I, I, I feel like, and maybe this is me being, like, retroactive with this, but, like, I think I was excited about this, because I was confused, but I was excited, because it's funny, it's interesting, it looked different, and I, to be fair, I still really like uh, FNAF World. I think uh, the audience gave it a, a, a pretty unfair shake when it came out, but I've always really enjoyed it. I think it's different, but there's nothing wrong with that. Anyway, the thing that came out of this, right, was this image of Mangle with the paddle ball, which is really funny. Uh, and that became kind of like the, held up as the thing that's like, what the heck is Scott thinking? This is ridiculous. Well, cut to FNAF or, or ScottGames.com a couple days later, uh, having a, a black screen and the teaser image of Mangle hanging there. And so he took this like idea of like, here's this cute, fun game. All of a sudden he's hanging from his own paddle ball game which is pretty crazy let's see if i can find the original hanging mangle uh image yeah here we go i was wondering if it came what was the words what were the words to this world words isn't it? you what you've all done see what you've all done oh yeah yeah okay so yeah that's right it was it was see what you've all done so i think i think that this was a response to everyone being, like, really critical of that teaser, right? Like, being very negative towards, like, what is this? They're cute. This is garbage. This is kid stuff, whatever. Uh, and so Scott responded with this teaser where he literally hanged Mangle uh, by his own paddle ball uh, to just be, like, see what you've all done. So, like, 
on on a lot of ways, I think it was a really smart move because it gave us an iconic image. It was really disturbing. It, it got back into the scariness that is this franchise. But, well, and, that, and that's it. On one hand, it showed like, hey, this is this is a new direction, but it's still rooted in kind of the stuff that made FNAF interesting. Do you hear voices? I hear them in real life, but the mic doesn't pick them up, so you, you look insane. I, 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 hear, I hear voices. <laughs> I'm hearing voices. We were so confused because we heard voices, and I'm like, there should be no voices here. Where, who's down here? I was, I, was ready to, I was ready to bust some heads. Oh. I I didn't I haven't seen the Will Smith of the Oscars stuff yet. Really? Really? No one. It was bonkers. I don't think it was real. I, it can't be real. Of course it wasn't no. real. Of course it wasn't. The Oscars need PR. Yeah, of course. And like Will Smith is like king of PR. Yeah, oh, yeah. you're right. No, they got it. Yeah. They they knew what they, they knew what they were doing. Oscars are looking for ways to be relevant, so they're making it into a drama show. That's annoying. Right. I mean, Hey, here's the industry's highest honor. Yeah. Let me... Here's a moment for TikTok. Yeah, here's... Right. Mm -hmm. Or, like, I, I wouldn't be surprised about the Moonlight versus La La Land mm, thing either. Interesting. Like, you don't mess up that sort of stuff. Like, that's... Yeah. Anyway. And they didn't nominate Come On, Come On. I'm sorry. Which, to me, is the biggest sign of disrespect. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Or sorry. Titane. Sorry to Mike Mills. Yeah. Or Titane. Yeah. Not a single nom for Titane. No. Are they, they really even don't relevant respect. anymore? No, they're not. They haven't been relevant for no, a long time. Not at all. In a long time. I think when Parasite won, it was like cool. But no, Parasite was great. I mean, yeah. I was glad that Parasite got attention. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, no one cares. This is them very clearly trying to like be yeah. relevant, and then but it, it's pretty. It's pretty disgusting, that actually. Sucks. It's like, like clawing for drama. Like, oh man, the only way people are going to talk to us is this drama happens. Yeah, it's bad. It was, it was bad very look. uncomfortable to watch. Oh, I'm sure. Like. I don't... But now people are like, oh, you got to watch the Oscars because you don't know what's going to happen. No. <laughs> right? No. I was going to say, I don't think so. No. It was just like... Anyway. I felt, I felt reaffirmed in my decision not to watch it. Yeah. Just because, like, I knew I would see the mm. only interesting thing that would I, I watched for, like... I watched, like, one award. I watched, like, Best Actress or whatever. Mm. And it was so boring and so... <laughs> like, well, and, and also just so, like, again, like, irrelevant and self-congratulatory. I'm like, yeah. this does... I. This is not interesting at all. I was glad to see Dune sweep. Dune. Dune was really good and deserved Dune. a lot of awards. Dune deserved a lot. Did you end up watching I did. the rest of it? Okay, good. Because yeah. I was going to ask you if you were basing that decision off the first like half hour that you watched before <laughs> you had to go. So I'm glad I'm glad that you finished watching the whole I thing. I did finish watching good. Dune. And okay. it was great. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. I watched Here. it with headphones on, which was crazy. That's a that's a sign of that you're really into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here, I'm going to put my microphone back under my shirt okay. and end this conversation. We'll see if that makes it in. I, it might. Yeah. Who knows? I'm going to put on my microphone, though. Cool. Okay. I'm going to shut the door. I don't know. I, I'm Now I'm concerned about strange voices in the other room. <laughs> Just when voices have... You guys weren't going to do anything about this? So you're like, hey, there are strange voices happening outside. Well, I was telling I was Matt, ready. like, we're strange voices. Maybe those are just new people. More, more. <laughs> They're trying to find the studio, Matt. The They're army lost. expands. Yeah. I, was, I was ready to defend you guys. Oh, well, thank you. I was there. I was going to punch them. <laughs> Probably not. My arms are weak from all the yard work I did this weekend. So I was going to kick them. Maybe I would just give them a strongly worded letter to, like, get out. Anyway, hanging mangle. There it is. That's the story. And also the Oscars. That's a thing uh, that I didn't watch, but I'm seeing the news about because, of course. Okay. Uh, what else is in here? Missing Kid in Stage 01. Um, Missing Kid in Stage 01 is the fact that in uh, FNAF 3, you have the mini games, the glitch mini games that help you unlock Happiest Day minigame. Uh, the, the most important or one of the most interesting though of them is Stage 01, which I'm going to show you right now. And... Uh, oh, they're not showing you the whole map. Um, right. There it is. Yep. So you'll see here, you, you glitch out of bounds, and then you teleport around out of bounds through this kind of maze-looking thing in order to find the, the crying child up here. You give him the cake, he gets the cake, and congratulations, you completed that minigame appropriately. However, one of the things that uh, people call out with this one is that there's a missing kid right here. So you have... 
you know, three kids, three kids, three kids, three kids, three kids, there's a missing kid. And there was a, a lot of speculation or wondering like, wait, why is a kid missing from this one? It's the missing child. Uh, it is the child that presumably, uh, to my, in my mind at least, it's open for interpretation. To me though, it seems pretty clearly as a reference back to the missing children's incident that Bonnie took one of the kids, stole them, uh, got them into the back and, and killed them or whatever. But to me, this one crying child is probably the same thing or at least related to the missing child that's there. So that is the reference there. I'm surprised to see that one, again, so deep into this thing, uh, especially because that one is a fairly well-known part of just the overall gameplay. Yeah, it's part of like the, the secret ending, but it's it's kind of working you towards the game's good ending, so I'm surprised by that one. Um, plushy prototypes. I don't know what this is a reference to. I know that for a long time in this series, uh, the plushies, uh, the the plush, the plush merchandise has been really bad, uh, and a lot of people have complained a lot that the plushies are real bad. Uh, and over the years, they've gotten them better, but I know originally when they the pictures were first released, yeah, this must be it. Final release prototype, yeah, that they must have been really bad. And and I saw a lot of talk in the YouTube community, the FNAF community, about like, what is Scott doing? What are they thinking? He's like, you know, these are such iconic designs and they're so cute and look at what the terrible things that they're deciding with them. So this is Maso 777. What is up, guys? I and you can see, yeah, so it looks like they've assembled some of the pictures. But like, why does Freddy have black eyes? It doesn't make sense because that is not how he looks. The coloring is off. Um, at no point is he ever kind of shown with that, so that's real weird. Okay, we're, we're zooming around here. Wow, we got a lot of, we got a lot of effects going on! <laughs> I love it! Uh, wait, is this the bad Bonnie? Here, let's see if I can, let me see if I can find it. What? You guys are laughing back there. Why he look like that? Why does he look like that? <laughs> right? I mean, well, that's that's the question, right? Everyone's like, did no one actually bother to work with this team to make the, the animatronics look the way that they're supposed to look? And so early on... <laughs> there it is. That's a good one. That's right. <laughs> it's amazing. I love that cheek. But yeah, early on there was a, there was a quality control issue with the plushes, and so it's like black eye Chica Angry. got got into a street fight, Chica <laughs> brawler, Chica. It's just angry, just an angry chicken. Oh my gosh, voices are coming at me from all over the place. Is that all of them? Yeah, and then of course the black eyed Freddy. Yeah, so I think that is what the the reference here is. Uh, is the idea that these plushies and early merch in general for this series was pretty poor. They've since gotten it back on track and, and do better quality control now, but I know that that was a thing. Um, Scott listens to Markiplier. This one is similar to how The Simpsons predicted everything in world history. This one is Markiplier has predicted a lot of instances in the FNAF franchise, right? I believe he predicted the name or the appearance of, what was it, Nightmare, Nightmare Puppet, I think at one point maybe. I know that he, that the, the consensus, right, is, oh, Markiplier predicted FNAF VR, because early on in his FNAF 1 playthrough, he's like, oh, this would be so scary in, in VR. Uh, he predicted a couple other things too. I forget what, I'm sure there's, a, here, I'm sure there's a video of this. Mm. Here we go. Yeah, and this idea of, hey, FNAF, love it. Here, let's do the, the bigger one, 1. 1.4 million views. That's our bud. And welcome back to another video on FNAF. FNAF, there he is. Whenever I went, it would kind of seem at okay. times, Mark, it helps me out. And Supplier's yep. very first video of FNAF. Like, this is the video that kicked off Finance of Freddy's. Okay. And in my opinion, Finance of Freddy's wouldn't have been as big if Markiplier didn't play it. I don't know. That's, unpopular opinion. The video has over... That's not an unpopular... That is a fact. 80 million views that's, right now, which is... That's not an opinion. Insane. That is... And people are still... That is absolutely it provable like fact. It's, it's really, really crazy. And our first prediction from Markiplier comes okay. from this what video. It? And it comes at 1359. Great. And he talks about how crazy it would be how crazy it would be okay if yep. you could play this game on an oculus rift great yep Let's okay the clip i never want to play this game again yep i'll be a good boy 
God damn it. This would be like terrifying if you controlled the cameras with like an Oculus Rift or something. Oh my god. Because you just move your head back and forth. Oh, there it god. is. There it is. Markiplier. See, everyone's always like, is MatPat secretly Scott? No. Markiplier is secretly Scott Cawthon. Like, I'm just here offering lore advice, but here's Markiplier making the big business decisions about let's, you know, green light the FNAF help wanted stuff. Um, okay, next. Of him playing through FNAF 1. And it there was more than this. Okay, I found go. this really, really interesting because I've always thought, you know, Markiplier names his characters when he plays games, you know? He does, he does yeah. A lot. And he started calling Bonnie Bon Bon for some that's reason. Right. That's right. Yeah, cool. that's right. He, he, he came up with Bon Bon. Would I even have fast enough reflexes to stop him? God damn it. Oh, is that Mr. Bon Bon coming out of his hidey hole? God, I'm so freaking spastic right now. I think Mr. Bon Bon came out of his hidey hole. See, Mr. Bon Bon, which then fast forward to sister location where Funtime Freddy has a puppet and that puppet's name is no longer Bonnie, even though it is in the shape of Bonnie, it is Bon Bon. So, uh, again, like, Scott is listening to Markiplier, or are one and the same, Scott equals Markiplier, just like Sans equals Ness, guys. It's there. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Markiplier, and welcome back to Five Nights at so Freddy's. Now, I'm going to attempt to beat this game right now, and I have a strategy to do it. Now, I have kind of figured this out already, but you don't actually need to watch where they are throughout the entire building, considering that they can just jump behind your door at any time. So the most important thing okay. to do is just check outside your door with the lights and check on Pirate's Cove very frequently, because this asshole over here is, doesn't even know what he's doing, so how is he going to give me advice when he's already stuffed into I don't know what he's doing. So as we heard, Mark talks about the phone guy getting stuffed into a box. And he probably didn't even mean... So as we heard... He doesn't even know what he's doing, so how is he going to give me advice when he's already stuffed into a freaking box? So as we heard, Mark talks about the phone guy getting stuffed into a box. And he probably didn't even mean to say box. He probably meant to say suit. But it's funny how the box became such a huge thing. <laughs> yep, that was that was absolutely a prediction. Very obvious. Right, guys? That Markiplier was the one that created the FNAF 4 box. Because he called the phone a box. Sure, makes perfect sense. It's great. So not all of them are are super. So you know, some are some are some are weaker than others. It happens at eleven thirteen. Okay. Let's play the clip. Three sets of teeth. I think I saw like maybe three or four sets of teeth. I don't even know, care about the baby anymore. Goddamn, I don't care about waking up the baby. Let all the little baby plushy sleep. A nice sleepy sleep. Is that the movie? Marionette, I think people are calling. I'm gonna call it the baby because that's what that thing is. You don't want to wake the baby. Don't wake the music box right out and wake the baby. So it's kind of widely known that Mark called the marionette baby for some reason, and we don't know why. So Mark entered into, you know, he, he started a baby animatronic, sure. Here we go. Okay, best Number for five. last. Okay, best for last. So this one is actually the biggest one. I would save the best for last, of course, you know. This one comes from the most anticipated FNAF game I think of all time, Finance of Freddy's 3. This one comes from his first video that he posted on FNAF 3, and it comes at 510. Let's play the clip. Is this place decrepit? There's so many boarded up places. Those are right. Error, error, error. Okay. All right, then. Guess I can't go that way for summer. Ah, what the hell? <laughs> so scary. Purple guy! Oh, good, good. Second night. Great. As you can see, when the animatronic got destroyed, Markiplier called him Purple Guy. No one really coined this name until Markiplier said it. And Is that true? No! Is that... That's, that's news to me. No way. I don't know if that's true or not. If, if Markiplier coined Purple Guy, though, that's cool. I thought his name was canonically Purple Guy. Y'all really, y'all just call him Purple Guy? Half, <laughs> here's the thing. Half the characters don't have names until we give them names. Like, um, or historically speaking, right? Yeah. Nowadays that people, you know, search on uh, the, all the websites where Scott is trademarking the names for these things. Now people know, like, the official names before, mm -hmm. but especially in FNAF's one through... And that started around Sister Location, where, like, I searched on Trademark.com or whatever, and I saw that Scott trademarked these five names. Biddy Bab, Ennard, Baby, whatever. Um, and so people knew before that game was released that all those characters would be named those things, and it kind of stuck. But before that, the idea of, like, Toy Bonnie, Toy Foxy, you know, or Toy, Toy Freddy... Uh, withered stuff like it was all just shorthand that the community kind of had to come up with in a lot of ways okay. because no one really like golden bear like I think we talked about it earlier on the on the iceberg but like 
Golden Freddy was never really golden. I think it was like Yellow Bear or whatever, right? Like mm -hmm. there was, huh. those are things that the community just kind of like needed shorthand to talk about, like Crying Child, right? It's like, uh, what do you talk about this random sprite with a kid who's you got these like tear streaks? Like, ah, we'll call him the Crying Child, you know? So like a lot of this stuff has always been kind of non-canonical, non-canonical that like retroactively becomes canonical when the community's just kind of agreed on it. Interesting. Because um, also up to this point, and this, I mean, on one hand, I'm surprised to see that Mark you know, potentially coined the phrase purple guy. On the other hand, it's not all that surprising because in, in FNAF 1, purple guy was actually pink. And and that was, for a long time, that, that prompted the debate between whether there are two killers or just one. Is it pink guy and purple guy or is it just all purple guy? And we were, I think we were the ones, I, not... I, Tooting my own horn, I don't know. But, like, I think we were the ones to really end that debate and show that, like, hey, let's these two are actually one and the same. Let's consolidate them down. There's only one killer. Yes, the shade of color is different between game one. Even from game two to three, it was different shades of purple. And people are like, well, is it three different killers? And we're like, no, it's all the same guy. It's all purple guy. Here it is. I'm surprised um, no one suggested Magenta Man. Ooh. Oh! Ooh. Oh, that's one way that's to good. Thank you. Magenta, well, but they're not. They're none of them are magenta. You got you got a pink guy and a purple guy. Pink person. Magenta man. Pink guy doesn't really have the same. No, pink no, guy doesn't work. Purple guy has a has a really strong energy yeah. associated with it. Right, purple guy is really it's like purple it's guy. again just like poke the knee. <laughs> yeah. Purple guy, like it's. It's whatever it is about the consonants and how hard they are and how satisfying. Purple yeah. guy. It works. I, there's just enough percussives. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm. Purple guy. Yeah, right? Kind of like, and, and I mean, Magenta Man's good because, like, it's it's softer. Like, mm. Music Man. Music Man. Magenta Man. Ooh, that was good. That was a good one. I still can't believe y'all were like, you know, that purple guy. Yeah, and then that stuck, <laughs> and it stuck. But that's right. But that's. But again, like that's that's how how else do you refer? What, what else? So if no, you are presented with a, right, like if you are presented with a, a series of purple sprites, yeah. who pops out of nowhere, mm. what do you call him? He's a purple guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the question I have, and I, I, I again, I want to double. If you guys could double check this, I'd be I'd love to see it because purple guy technically appeared in FNAF two, but here's here's FNAF saying that. He coined the phrase, this is Markiplier coining the phrase, because that's a FNAF 3 gameplay moment. But Purple Guy existed in FNAF 2 as, because I said, because I, even in my FNAF 2 theory, I say Purple Guy is Phone Guy. I, I'm almost, hold up. Now I'm curious. FNAF 2 game theory. I, I swear, I'm like, who is Purple Guy? Purple Guy is Phone Guy. Coming from the old anime, which is but now but the third time we see the how look at the foxy death mini game you call him purple man runs out to meet the kids but the third time we see the tall purple man again smiling well, foxy goes into the other room to find five dead children the man mm. in purple strikes the man in purple there a week. the man in purple huh. you know no way but is the purple man really something yeah purple man <laughs> wow oh that's so crazy oh that's nuts with these characters someone no one would suspect as first he always phone guy purple huh he refers to the management of the gender games i wonder if i call him well let's look at do i call him purple guy at all in this no i guess not get along which would explain i just call him like killer purple man that he describes as always think rare and chases noted into his tough to discern the robotic void view. The phone. You. Oh wait, go back. One more. Clear, tough to discern. It's not like any gun or. Oh, I've seen this phone guy. No, I say phone guy. Me, very clearly, a phone. The robotic voice no, it's a is spelling out for you. Save no, I swear I saw purple guy. Them. But when purple guy. There it is. Guy, but when purple guy. Screen crashes and all you're left with is you can't. But that's not where it ends, Internet. As you and I both know, there's still five huh. more Freddy's won. If this game is last in line and the puppet is truly pulling the strings behind all of this, you might be asking yourself where he is in Five Nights One. We know the other animatronics okay. got scrapped, but this ghostly guy should still be around. Ghostly guy. Ghostly, ghostly guy. guy. I mean, again, like you didn't know what to call things. And so in the first game, take a look at the East Hallway. It seems pretty normal, right? But every so often, the posters on the walls change, change this. to yeah, this. Yeah, okay. A crying child. Sequel? For the payment. Do I ever say the phrase purple guy is phone guy? Except for this? the fact that phone guy were a new smaller scale version. For the fact that phone guy died used to some Okay, this is me proving that it was a prequel. Worst 
of them. I remember that. Way with him into the afterlife. We can make up particles on the wall. He or coming from the soul. Huh. There are Fascinating. So I so I that's interesting. I wonder if that started the dominoes fall. Like I wonder if there's some element of like you know as as information disseminates outward where it's like because my initial theory was that purple guy, purple man, was phone guy. And so phone, phone guy was always established. Everyone just agreed phone guy was a thing that existed in this game. And so I wonder if the connection of phone guy to purple man ended up being purple guy. That's really interesting. That's so cool. I had no idea that that was where it really like solidified. Or if it did. If anyone can... Th this is the important stuff that needs to be archived for the history of the internet. So if anyone can find the provenance uh, to track the history of purple guy phone guy connection uh, and purple guy purple man connection, that'd be great. So interesting. Anyway, Scott listens to Markiplier. They are one and the same. Proven. Fact. Uh, using the mask and the flashlight at the same time. I, guess what? I bet in FNAF 2 you can use the flash and the mask at the same the flashlight and the mask at the same time. Whoa! Uh, I don't think that's that, but Grim Foxy Howl. Uh, Grim Foxy. I don't know this one. Grim Foxy! Do we have a, a howling of him? I'm assuming at some point he howled and then it was cut. That is, that is my guess. It, it's not even in his wiki page. Trivia. Let's try this. Grim, ah, trivia. Uh, corn Maze is actually humming. Corn, Fo Grim Foxy's song in the Corn Maze is just Foxy's actual humming heard in the first game, only edited to be more demonic sounding. That's interesting. Uh, his overall aesthetic seems okay. He's the first character introduced to FNAF VR to get merch. Makes sense. He's really cool. I like him a lot. Grim Foxy Howl? I don't know what this is in reference to. Just Grim Foxy Howl? Original voice impression? No, I'm not seeing... Like, you would think that Howl would be... Here we go. Grim Foxy's Howl animation. There it is. Grim Fox had an older and longer alert animation that went unused. Instead of raising his scythe, he would stand there and lift his head to howl like a wolf. All right, well, now we know. Not, not super important there. Let's see, what have, any other ones that I know off the top of my head? Scanning for glitches. Oh, FNAF 1! Oh, yeah, yeah, FNAF 1 Scream Origin. So this, this is actually another fun one. Um, FNAF 1 Scream Origin was a scary movie that Scott had watched when he was a kid if I remember right. Um, it was one of those, like, I was inspired by my, like, childhood trauma, uh, and they took the sound effect that was used for a moment of that, oh, here we go, uh, that was used for a moment of that, and they they put it into the game. So, Crazy Alien Pregnancy. The origin for the sound is a video called Crazy Alien Pregnancy, a scene from a British movie, Inseminoid. Yeah, that's right, Inseminoid, where a woman gives birth to aliens. There you go. 337. The timestamp for the original sound is 337. Okay. I have an idea for our movie night. Uh, well, Inseminoid? I want to watch Inseminoid. <laughs> yeah, you won't watch Harry Potter or, or Lord of the Rings with me, <laughs> no, but you will watch the movie <laughs> yes. where a woman, excuse me, quote, woman gives birth to aliens. Inseminoid sounds sick. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Here's... <laughs> Yeah, this is the one you want to watch with your boss, huh? All right. <laughs> this is horrific. What are we looking at? Oh, I see. It's, okay. it's her, yeah. I mean, that's a pretty horrific sound. Like, legitimately, that is terrifying. That was... Now that, I, now that I've revisited this... Because I looked at this way back when, but now that I'm revisiting, I'm like, oh, this is this is awful. No wonder it's so horrific. Like, he barely had to edit that sound in order to make it scary. Like, it has that sort of, like, demonic, but also, like, almost, like, robotic sound. Ah! This, whew! Scary, man. You thought these games were scary before. That is terrifying. Reminds me a lot of Earthbound, where uh, the creator of Earthbound, the final boss of Earthbound, Gygus, uh, is inspired by him as a child seeing a scary movie a kind of a you know an inappropriate movie for a kid to see but seeing a, seeing a scary movie and then processing that trauma and translating it onto the screen so it, it's it's interesting how a lot of these like horror moments these important 
uh, you know, visuals and sounds and stuff stick with you and then, you know, get used in your artwork later, which is really, really interesting. So there you have it. Um, any other ones that we can, I, I'd like to finish this one off. If we have the, do we have the time? We've got the time. Okay. Trick or treat BB jump scare. I think this is from FNAF VR. And I'm assuming this is during the trick or treat game where he has a jump scare, uh, but I don't know why that's notable. So in, in FNAF VR, there's the trick or treat game where certain animatronics come to the door and you have to wear the appropriate mask to match who's coming to the door. It's kind of like a puzzle game. If you miss it, you get jump scared. Uh, I don't know why, why this matters though. Um, let's see, Bloom Boy. Yes, we all know, oh my gosh, so many ads, Matt, so many ads. Hey, Ash, this has been on Matt's brain list for a while. Can you install an ad blocker onto here so okay. we can see fewer of them? I could do that. As, as you guys in charge of this, this computer, that would be great. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ash. Yeah, got you. <laughs> uh, what, what am I looking for here? Oh my gosh! St. Jude! <laughs> Trick or treat. Okay, the animations. The anime, yeah, okay. When the doorbell's rung, they run the door. Players need to track the anime. We're so deep into the, the iceberg that search results don't even like give us what we're looking for. Track the animatronics. What is up with Balloon Boy's jump scare? Right, it's trick or treat BB jump scare. I don't know what we're going for with this one. Okay, here we go, here's some jump scares. Oh, who's it gonna be? You don't know whose mask you're gonna be wearing. Uh-oh, here it comes! Jump scare! Yep, that, that's it. That is Balloon Boy's jump scare, I guess. Is there anything about it that I should, that's like noteworthy? I mean, it's Nightmare Balloon Boy. Does that matter? Chica, Mangle. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to be seeing with that one. Great, but there it is. You, you got to see a jump scare. That's, that's very exciting. Crying Cupcake. This is something I don't know. I feel like I've heard it at some point and I've seen it at some point. Are, is it a reference to these guys? Apparently Chica's part of me I'm in FNAF 3. You can find the Crying Cupcakes. Yeah, I, yes, that's true. You can find an area that appears to be crying cupcakes. And one of them she's Oh yeah, that's right. So this is a forgotten part of of the FNAF 3 mini game. The FNAF 3 mini games, I feel like introduced a lot of really cool imagery that kind of got lost because you don't actually need to do a lot of it in order to complete the mini game the quote unquote appropriate way. Uh, you have a lot of these scenes where you're falling down through these glitchy environments and seeing you know, giant crying puppets and multiple crying balloon boys. And here in Chica's party where you see multiple crying cupcakes. And they're totally right, uh, you know, competitive bid 70, 71 uh, in the Reddit post. 100% 100 right that there is a cupcake in here, if, if I recall correctly, that there is a cupcake in here who does kind of follow you slightly as you leave the room. And it's, and it's cool... But the thing is, you never actually have to see this stuff because it requires you to kind of like fall out of bounds and away from where you're supposed to go to kind of like deliver the cake to the kids. So at this point, everyone knows how to get the Happiest Day minigame. It's, it's pretty common knowledge. So no one actually revisits the weird corners of these minigames. But there's a lot of really cool imagery like the crying cupcakes here. Um, I don't know if that's what this is referring to. Yeah, like here, explaining the... FNAF 3, Shadow Cupcakes, and Puppet Crying. So you have giant, see, you have giant Puppet Crying in the Mangle Quest. You have all the cupcakes crying. It's really, really cool. Um, Puppet is crying because he sees he didn't free the toy souls. They didn't get their revenge. The five cupcakes. And again, like to me, it's, I believe if I recall correctly, it's five crying balloon boys. It's five crying cupcakes. All of it referencing the missing children's incident where five dead kids, to me at least. Um, so there's never been a good opportunity to bring them up or talk about them, but it's, it's a really cool. I always thought that this was really scary, really compelling, uh, and just a really solid use of 
imagery. And unfortunately, just it, it gets swept under the rug relative to everything else that's going on in these games. So that was really cool. Uh, Plushy Potra, Grim Foxy Howl, scanning for glitches. Scanning for glitches. You guys FNAF VR? Oh, I think I saw What's up, guys, and welcome back to another Five Nights at Freddy's Fusion. VR Help Wanted Halloween update video. Now, today's video, we're hopping back into the game because a new Easter egg was actually just found over on the Reddit page by another YouTube user, which I'm linked in the description. But, seeing that. Okay, here we go. Okay, scanning for glitches so we can look around on the map. Wait, somebody was a direct way of having it happen, but no, it's just okay. random. Which, I mean, it's weird that the phone even shows like a red light. Cause that'd mean, like, I think that means there's somebody on the other line, so it's strange. Okay, so... Nope, nothing. All right, we'll give it one more shot, and then I'll start it after we go ahead and have it happen again. If we can have it happen again, that is. All right, here we go. Okay, so... All right, you, nothing. You All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get it to happen again, and I'll start it whenever we do. Oh, got it. Got it, guys. Got it again. Okay, huh. so this time I want to see what it says on the screen itself. Wait. Oh, there's a fire hydrant down there. i never even seen so, that. Okay, here we go. Okay, scanning for glitches so we can look around on the map. Wait, somebody was moving. Oh, I guess I was Jacko Chica. I don't know. Oh, look. Oh! What the heck? Wait, he didn't really? attack me. No glitches found. What is going on? So the game doesn't even like register me as being there, because Jacko Foxy would have annihilated me right there. Like no he didn't way! Attack I've me. never, I've oh. actually never oh, look, seen this. We, there's a fire hiding down there. I this is a cool that. Easter egg. Okay, here we go. Okay, scanning for glitches so we can look around on so, the map. So like wait. again, if like a certain random series of events happens and you get like you know whatever random number pulls up this gameplay. Somebody segment. was moving. Oh, I guess I was Jacko Chica. I don't know. Oh, weird. And it's... You got all this imagery happening? Sorry. Oh, oh look. Oh! What the heck? He didn't attack me. No glitches found. What is going on? So the game That's doesn't even so, like... That is so cool. I had no idea. Danger, keep out... So, which, uh, again, like... um. I mean, to me, it's that's cool. I I have never seen this before. I never knew that. Wow! It's and and you know, I think that all already it, it ties into the lore of the game, right? Where the whole game is about putting together the code uh, via the tapes and glitch trap. Like you're assembling glitch trap, and so the idea of scanning for glitches in FNAF VR is really interesting because they're scanning for glitch trap and the fact that they're saying there's no glitches found, it makes me wonder what the trigger for that is. Like, does that only happen? Because the, the timing actually matters a lot. If the game scans for glitches only in the end game, you know, after you've kind of beaten it and glitch trap has quote unquote left the game, now all of a sudden it, it shows like, oh, he has officially left the game, he's gone. Like something that we've only theorized about that he's leaving out to the real world, that would actually prove it. Scanning for glitches, no glitches found, glitch trap is gone. Or if it scans for glitches at any point in the game and it does that before the ending, uh, before glitch trap has quote unquote left, uh, then it shows that he is actually the one in control of the game and he's manipulating what we see and is able to hide his code uh, so that way he can kind of affect how we're behaving in the world. That is wild. That must have been so rare because usually I'm, I'm pretty good about following the, the rare Easter eggs and, and catching some of this stuff when it pops up. But I think one of the weird things about FNAF VR was, one, not a lot of people were able to play it early on because it was VR only, right? And that limited the amount of people who could actually buy the game, play it, and upload videos. Because it's very cumbersome, like, not many people have VR headsets. It's also very cumbersome to record gameplay inside of a VR headset. So unlike purple guy attacking you in FNAF 2, or some of these random glitch animations that would happen in FNAF 1 or FNAF 3, here, you didn't have as wide of a player base to give you the random chances of these sorts of things happening. Because maybe that player was playing it, they saw the random chance, they didn't know it happened, they tried to get it again, they don't have gameplay running, it's, it, maybe it's set as too rare of an interval. The amount of, it, there's a lot of fine tuning to make what happened with FNAF 1, 2, and 3 really work. Because it has to ha some of those glitches, those like random moments, the like spooky pop-ins or whatever, have to happen frequently enough that it's going to happen to multiple people while they're recording gameplay, while they want to share it, and then to actually be the type of person to share it online and circulate it. Um, 
so it's 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 a fine balance to strike and they really you know those early games really lucked out when they found what that was and i think with fnaf vr a lot of those easter eggs that were popping out of it like uh, scanning for glitches or the one that i think we talked about in a previous episode of this and i've talked about in game theories every once in a while where if three posters in the barn show up as baby and you throw the darts on all three of them and all three of them land if 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 then you get the barn turning into black lights and it says it's me you know it's it's kind of like this this uh golden freddy spooky message but I had only seen one video of that ever because it's such a low probability occurrence. I'd only seen one video of it happen ever, and so I didn't know if it had been faked at that point. I didn't know if this was a real thing or if someone just for the views and the clout and whatever had manufactured it because these games are rife with that sort of thing. Um, so FNAF VR and secrets found in FNAF VR existed in this weird territory where I could never confirm that this was actually a thing that was repeatable by multiple players. Um, so that's, that's really, really cool that the glitch is found. I, it's wild to see. Cause, and also that's the sort of thing that I, I keep an eye out for. Cause that's the sort of stuff that feeds into theories. And so to find something new in this franchise, this deep into the, the rabbit hole, this deep into the iceberg. That's awesome. We finally did it. We did it. <laughs> We're really reaching the end. We did it. I mean, like friends? that, that is properly placed. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's so deep that even I, as someone who has dug through all of this stuff... You're the FNAF guy. Specifically for this, mm -hmm. didn't know about it or had kind of passed by it. That's fascinating. Cool. Okay. So there you go. Um, I think that's pretty much everything. Dreadbear in Hallway is the only thing that we're missing at this point. Um, FNAF VR. So Dreadbear was the expansion in FNAF VR. So... Spooky in the Spooky Mansion game. Uh, great. I dread in here videos. Dread Baron Hall. I'm assuming this is a video. The hallway. Okay, great. I'm assuming he shows up in a hallway in FNAF VR. There's a couple instances where you're kind of progressing down a spooky hallway. At some point, Dreadbear shows up in the hallway. That's what, that's what I'm guessing. I'm assuming it's it's not a lot more than that. It's not worth us focusing a lot on. So there you go. We are one away. We are one away, friends. One away. The final box awaits us. I don't know what that means. I don't know what we do after that. Like after this, I'm gonna lose all sense of identity. Like <laughs> what what will I have to look forward to at this point? Why would people stay subscribed to this channel? Oh, you point? know there's more FNAF icebergs. Okay. If I know the internet. Yeah, there's there's no security breach on this one. Right. So there's probably a security breach iceberg. Yeah. Which I probably don't know as much about as I, I should. This series will never end. It'll never end. This is this is it. <laughs> this is ongoing FNAF content. Woo! Or maybe, you know what, maybe we break it up and there's, I'm sure there's got to be like a FNAF fan game that's been released. Probably. In, in the time that we've, you know, the 20 months that this has been going on. <laughs> I've, I found some things for you. Yeah? Oh, Ash! Ooh. Whoa! Ash pulling it out! <laughs> Coming out of nowhere! All right. It's like, I got it. All right. Well, there you have it. We got one more of these and then Ash has some surprises in store. Wahaha. Wahaha, indeed. Yes. Matt, can you give me your, give, give me a, give me an evil laugh, Matt. You know I don't do voices. It's just, it's just an evil laugh. Ha! Ha! <laughs> Was that evil? That's gonna, you know what? Some, some... No, indie that's gonna live some, on the internet forever. Some indie oh. horror game designer oh, is gonna use that at ah. some point as their villain's <laughs> laughing sound. There it is. Just, just like in Seminoid inspired Scott Cawthon, you, sir. You, sir, today have inspired some budding indie game designer. Congratulations. And that's what I do it for. Ha. <laughs> ha. Oh, no. It's the purple guy. So anyway, it's the purple man. It's the purple man coined by Mark Vlade. This was interesting. I learned a lot in this one. This is cool. Uh, so next time we finish this up once and for all, and then we move on to other things with our lives. Uh, but let me know down in the comments below. I asked you a couple things. The, the dangle versus the hangle is definitely one that I'm curious to see the answer of. Uh, and I will see you in the next video. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video. A video for you. See ya!